Well, we're obviously, you know, very excited about the challenges of the season, but even more excited about, you know, what you have to do to try to, you know, develop a team, uh, a team that can play with consistency, guys that can go out there and give the kind of effort, play with the kind of mental toughness, um, ability to sustain, execute, uh, do their job together as a unit, and have the kind of team chemistry that um, promotes the togetherness that you want on the team so that you can be successful. And then the next challenge is, is can you sustain that? You know, we've had some really good speakers here the last couple nights, but if you sort of boil it down to what's the message, it's all about choices. You know, Michael Phelps, you know, spoke last night and talked about your actions speak louder than words. Uh, you have a short window to really accomplish things as an athlete because it's not something that you can do your entire life, uh, at least as football players. So make a commitment to doing things that you need to do on and off the field that's going to help you be successful. But that's also been the message from everybody else. It just comes down to choices and decisions. So the kind of choices and decisions the individuals on our team make is going to make the team what it is. We have some good pieces. You know, it's kind of interesting to me that I see articles every day that you all decided already, you know, what kind of team we're going to have, uh, what the expectations are for the team. I think in some ways this creates a much more difficult challenge to uh, have players, you know, be hungry, try to prove what they can do together as a group. But it is a challenge that, you know, we're willing to deal with. And, you know, hopefully uh, we've got the right kind of leadership on our team to be able to overcome uh, some of that so that we can um, avoid complacency and stay focused on doing the right things, deal with success if we have success, be able to deal with frustrations if we have failures. And I think how we manage all those things will determine what kind of team we really have. You asked me about um, injuries the other day. Obviously, Cam Latu is the guy that you asked me about. He has a minor knee injury. Uh, he's going to be out a couple weeks. Um, I don't know exactly how long that is. Happened about 10 days ago. So these things usually go day to day. Uh, we had uh, Hastings came in with an injury. We fixed. He'll be back shortly, probably. Um, Elijah Pritchard um, tore his pec. Uh, in the weight room uh, a while back in the summer, so he'll be out for a little while or a little. Had a shoulder injury coming in. It was bothering him, uh, and so we decided to fix it, so he'll be out for a little while as well. But Aaron Anderson has a little knee injury, but he'll probably be back in you know, a few weeks as well. So those are kind of all the guys on our team that have issues. Four of them are freshmen, so we're just kind of trying to get better each and every day and challenge guys to be the best that they can be on a consistent basis. Okay, with that, we'll start with John Zinger right here. Coach, this kind of goes along with your opening statement, but how, how well have um, Will and Bryce done it, kind of remaining hungry, remaining focused, and avoiding that complacency after the seasons they had? Will and Bryce are great. They're they do a good job every day in practice. They're very focused on what they want to do, what they want to accomplish. Uh, these guys are sort of driven individuals. That's why they've had the success that they've had to this point. But I haven't seen any indications at all that they're not continuing with that same drive to uh, be the best that they can be. They continue to set good examples for other players on the team. They're not an issue. Um, I, I think their leadership has been very, very helpful in helping other players actually continue to make good choices and decisions so they can be successful. Could you assess the uh, competition at the corner spots? Well, I think the good news is, is we have competition. Uh, I can't tell you that any guy on the depth chart has sort of separated himself in terms of who's the most consistent performers, who's going to give up the fewest plays, who's going to be the best tackler. But we do have really good competition at all those positions. 
uh, Kyrie Jackson, Eli Ricks battle it, um, Kool-Aid and Terry on Arnold battle it. Jacquez Trez Robinson has shown a lot of improvement uh, to be a contributor at you know some position. I think Brian Branch could actually play corner if we needed him to. Uh, we do practice him some there, so I, I can't give you any like it's a horse race. Who's in the lead? Who's in second? Who's in third? That's why we have competition. On that line, how has Eli Ricks progressed since he got here in the spring? He's made uh, a lot of improvement. I think that, you know, Eli sort of, with the injuries that he had and the time that he was off, it was really a, a more difficult transition for him physically, emotionally, mentally to come from where he was to where he needs to get to to be a the kind of player that he wants to be. And we certainly want to help him do that in every way we can. And I think sometimes when you go through that, all those things, it can affect your confidence a little bit because you get frustrated and struggle because you're not used to being in the kind of condition that you once were because uh, no fault of his, but he had some difficult circumstances to overcome with the injuries and so forth. But he is making very, very good progress you know, physically and on the field um, in terms of grasping the system and having a better understanding of what's required of him to be a good player. Just what do the summer additions at receiver bring to the offense, especially an older guy like Tyler Harrell? And, and how do you feel like that receiving core is coming together? Uh, I think Jermaine Burton is the guy that has played with the most consistency out of the receiver group. Of course, he was here in the spring, so he's a little ahead of the other guys. Uh, Tyler has been sort of in and out a little bit uh, to this point. He has been able to practice on a daily basis, but not 100%. I do think that he has shown that he has a lot of ability. We just need to get it channeled in the right direction so that we can use him in a way that's going to be most productive for him and for us. The freshmen, I think they've all showed some promise. Which ones are going to be able to sustain? That's always the most difficult thing for the for the younger guys on the team. They've never been through uh, a college season. They've never been through a fall camp, probably as demanding as what a college fall camp is. So we'll see who can sort of sustain and continue to grow and develop. And I think there are some guys there that could make a contribution depth-wise as well. Given the depth at the running back position, do you kind of go into the fall with an idea of how you want to spread out carries, or do you kind of just let that play out? What's the thought process behind kind of how, how that plan works? Well, the plan works that the best players play. I mean, we don't have a plan to say, okay, this guy gets this many reps, this guy gets this many reps, this guy gets if this guy's the best player, then we're going with the best player. Then the next best player is going to spell him and he'll get playing time. If somebody else can make, um, contribute in terms of a winning performance, then whether it's on special teams or whether it's in a limited role that we create for them, uh, we're certainly going to try to do that. But uh, it's good to have depth at that position. Uh, this is a position where we had significant injuries last year. So, but just let the guys compete. But you compete, and the guy that comes out the best is the guy that has the most opportunities. And uh, that's just how we've always assessed, you know, the positions on our, on our team. Coach, you mentioned Michael Phelps coming in and speaking last night. How do you determine each fall who these guest speakers are going to be? Is it more connections you have? Is it connections on the staff? And then just um, how important are those speakers to kind of set the mindset each camp? It's all about messaging. Um, we're, 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 you've heard me say this many times before. We're trying to help our players be more successful in life in terms of sort of the psychological disposition, the mindset that they can create for themselves in terms of the habits that they create that's going to contribute to them being successful in whatever they choose to do. And realizing what they do on the field and off the field uh, are things that I think a lot of lessons can be learned from those things uh, that can carry over in their life. So 
when we do evaluations of who's going to speak to the team, we actually do evaluate what is their mes message. Um, they, all these people have a message they've spoken somewhere before. And if we think that's something that can impact our players and create interest in uh, them making sort of the choices and decisions and changes they need to make to help them be more successful, that's how we determine uh, who we'd like to, to, to visit with them. Sometimes it's um, sort of character development. Sometimes it's, it's also, um, you know, behavioral issues. Uh, which all come down to choices and decisions as well that can sidetrack your chances of being successful, you know, in the future because that's also very, very important. So understand the consequences of good, bad behavior, cause and effect, all those things are taken into consideration when we try to make an impact and influence on what will help these guys make better choices and decisions to have a better chance to be successful. So what have you seen from Jaheim Otis and his weight loss this offseason? Just how have the physical parameters of that defensive line position evolved over the last 15 years? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, Otis, Otis, his weight loss, how he's gotten in shape, and then how the defensive line and the approach has changed over the last 15 years. With well, I think that I am pleased with several of our guys. Uh, we, we've almost eliminated a lot of weight issues, which come from a scientific approach, not me looking at a guy and saying he needs to lose 10 pounds, but a muscle mass, body fat correlation that helps a guy be most efficient. And I'm pleased with the way a lot of our big guys have sort of got that into balance. Uh, I think Miss Amy does a really good job of, you know, helping guys. Again, it goes to, back to the kind of choices and decisions you make about you know, what you eat, when you eat it, how much you eat of certain things uh, that can create the kind of increase of muscle mass, decrease of body fat that makes you a more efficient player. When I say efficient, I'm not talking about your ability to do something once. I'm talking about your ability to sustain it, you know, for 40, 50 plays in a game uh, at the same high level. So those guys have done a good job. I think it's contributing to them being better football players. And I'm pretty pleased with the overall team improvements that we made from that standpoint, as well as explosive movements and speed. Uh, I think, you know, Dave Blue and his group have done a really good job of motivating the players to work hard in some of those areas, which hopefully will be helpful on the field. Coach, last, in your last press conference, you talked about the continuity of bringing back Coach Golding, Coach O'Brien at the coordinator position. Can you talk about the three new coaches, Coach Robinson, Coach Wolford, and Coach Cox, and what they bring to your staff? We actually have four new coaches. So, but I had to think about that for a minute. Well, first of all, I think continuity is important. I think it's important for players a, and relationships that they have, uh, respect and trust that they develop uh, in the people who are trying to help them be successful. Coaching is teaching. Teaching is ability to inspire learning. So to have that respect and trust, I think, is beneficial for all players. We've had a lot of changes here in leadership positions. We've made pretty good transitions in that regard. Uh, but I think to have the continuity on the staff enables you in the off season to do a better job from a quality control standpoint of evaluating what did we do last year? How could we make it better? And I think that's really, really one of the most important things uh, that we can help ourselves systematically with. So player relationships, systematic impl implementation of the system, how we could do it better from a year ago. Uh, all those things, I think, contribute in a positive way. All the new coaches that we have, you know, Wolf is really a good offensive line coach. I think he's developed really good relationships with the players. I like the progress that we made in the offensive line. You know, Coach Cox is probably one of the brightest young guys that 
we've seen for a while. Uh, so we're glad to have him on the staff. You know, T. Rob has got a really good relationship with the players. They relate to him really well. He's done a good job of learning the system. Uh, having Charles Kelly there in the secondary too has been beneficial. And I think Coleman has done a really, really good job with special teams. You know, his energy and enthusiasm and getting the players to buy in to play special teams is one of the most important things that you do. Uh, plus, I think we've improved ourselves systematically. So um, I think all the additions on the staff have been a real plus for us. What's the biggest challenge integrating a transfer into a positional group that's already been established, that have already been teammates for, for a while, and getting that dynamic uh, into the right place? Uh, I, I think that we've always, and I think our players have always done a good job of this, we've had so many new guys come into the program. Even back in the years, how many freshmen have we had contribute to the success of our team? I mean, we won a national championship in 2017. There were six true, there were six freshmen on the field when we won the game in overtime. All three receivers, Leatherwood was playing left tackle, Najee Harris was playing tailback, two was playing quarterback. So we've always promoted for our current players to embrace new players. And I think our players want to win, and our players understand that when we bring players in and they help them in the transition, that it actually enhances our chances of being successful. And I think our players have done a really, really good job of that. So everybody wants to play. Competition, I think, is a good thing in terms of helping everybody get better because it makes everybody better. Not only the guys you're competing against, but the guy at your position, but also what kind of guys do they have that you go against every day. Uh, that helps guys develop tremendously. So. Uh, our players have a pretty good respect for that, and they've always sort of embraced, you know, guys coming in uh, to the program. So, and the guys that we brought in so far, uh, they've done a really good job of buying into the principles and values of the organization. So it was easy for all of us to respect and trust them in terms of how they can contribute and what they could do. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Appreciate it.